Hello and welcome to the Bankers Leadership Series in association with SWIFT, exploring how the financial industry is really working together to construct the future of payments. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined by Vikesh Patel, Head of SWIFT UK and Ireland. Paul Horlock, CEO of Pay.UK. Victoria Cleland, Executive Director of Banking Payments and Innovation at the Bank of England. Simon Ecott, I'm Head of Innovation and Business Development at NatWest. I'm Andrew Smith, CTO at RTGS Global and ClearBank. Marco Hughes, Managing Director of Core Payment Product, Global Liquidity and Cash Management, HSBC. In the first chapter, we'll explore the large infrastructural changes happening in the UK and globally. Victoria, I was going to turn to you first in terms of looking at the fundamental changes that are happening in, at the infrastructure layer. Absolutely. I think it's a really exciting time for payments. We're seeing a lot of change in terms of demand from consumers. We're seeing the economy change, technologies changing, and I think payments are there at the forefront. And I'll talk a bit about the real-time growth settlement system and our renewal program. But I think it's important that we're not the only piece that's changing. I think Paul's going to talk a bit later about new payment architecture. We're seeing Fed now. We know that other countries are renewing their real-time growth settlement systems, for example, Canada. So lots of change going on. And we, as the core infrastructure, we need to be ready to serve what everyone else wants. What we're doing with real-time growth settlement renewal is actually trying to make a system that is more resilient. That is at the heart of what we as a central bank want to do. But we're also looking for ways to increase innovation. So, for example, greater access to a greater number of participants, increased operability between systems using ISO 2082 messaging, and also trying to improve user functionality with read-write APIs, so grasping the opportunity to go way beyond the core resilience angle. Excellent. And Paul, can you talk a little bit about the new payments architecture that is coming in? Yeah, so the, the payment strategy forum that the industry came together to work on two or three years ago um, really came to the view that the great work the UK has done in, in delivering things like faster payments needs to move to the next iteration. So the, the drive to create a new payment architecture for retail payments in the UK alongside the wholesale changes in RTGS will give us the chance to create a new clearing and settlement layer for the UK's retail payments industry and provide them with chances to create new products and innovations above that layer. Excellent. Uh, Vikesh, I was going to turn to you next because obviously from SWIFT's perspective you can see what's happening on a more global level. We really see three broad themes that continue to be driving forces. So the first one is the uh, pressure to innovate, be that from regulation or actually uh, between financial institutions. That pressure really manifests itself in delivering scale. Scale in operational efficiency, scale out to the end customer but also just uh, new experiences that you know, financial institutions are able to offer. I think secondly, we're, we're seeing um, the continuation of the need for security and safety, so investment in those core key important areas. Um, and lastly, we're seeing competition, so competition be that from new entrants or actually financial institutions themselves. At SWIFT, we are working on GPI and the rollout of that product that brings tra trackability and traceability um, into the cross-border space um, as a means to kind of enable that um, innovation to flourish. Excellent. Well, I want to bring the banks in the room into this conversation. You know, what does it really mean for banks and your customers? Simon, can I uh, talk to you first? You picked up from the, the three first answers that there is a huge amount of change taking place. Um, and, and for banks and the customers, I think it's both a great opportunity, but also brings its challenges with it. Uh, in terms of challenges, just that scale of change and the amount of work that, that needs to be done in the industry over a, you know, over a short space of time you know, is, is clearly needing to be factored into this to make sure that we maintain resilience all the way through. But we also recognise this is a once in a generation opportunity to really make a step change in this in the uh, in the industry, and this does allow us whether it's by standardisation, whether whether it's renewal of the infrastructure to drive out costs, but to drive new pro product propositions as well. And we intend to take that opportunity. Excellent. And Marco, from HSBC's point of view, we look at real time payments and we look at Swift GPI as as massive accelerators of potential innovation in the market. And the challenge really for our customers is the third aspect of it, which is information. 
So is that information that real-time payments giving them able to them to tr for them to transform uh, their business uh, models to basically come up with different ways of doing things? So okay, if they've got a payroll and it's the first Thursday of each month and real-time payments isn't really going to help that, but if they've got a logistics chain, if they want to know how they're collecting from their customers, where they're collecting from, and automatically reconcile that, real-time payments and Swift GPI gives them real ability to leverage uh, their payments landscape to uh, affect real change within their own organisation. Everybody's talking about essentially customer outcomes, the experience of I've got the freedom to pay in a particular way, how I want to or when I want to. Uh, and that's really fundamentally what we're getting to, which is better customer outcomes, whether you're a core pro or whether you're a retail individual. Okay. That's, that's how we drive that. Um, but now, what really needs to happen for this whole uh, ecosystem to be ready? The ecosystem is already there, so to speak. It, it's growing, it's evolving. It's not really needing a, a massive disruption. It needs just that evolutionary step change. I think we've talked about that uh, a little bit already with RTGS version 2 and, and Pay UK. I think we need to just look at ways that could we accelerate that change a little bit further. My customer experiences are now being driven by technology companies, not necessarily by an experience within the bank. So how can we actually try and maneuver the you know, Payments UK, if you like, or UK PLC to keep up with that change in expectations? So Paul, from your perspective, what do you think it will take for the ecosystem to be ready? We're seeing new products coming to market, we're seeing new overlay services coming to market. What we're doing with the change for MPA and also for RTGS is developing the, that core infrastructure in a way that it will support further innovation in the future. But we can't stop, we can't wait. You know, technology is moving at a rapid pace as our customer expectations and our job is to help guide that ecosystem to safe outcomes that allow those new innovations to flourish. In Chapter 2 we're going to be looking at how this new infrastructure is enabling new business models.